I'm not ashamed. What did David do differently that allowed him to successfully move the ark to Jerusalem? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of 1 Chronicles on Walking Through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing 1 Chronicles chapter 15, verses 1 to 15. But before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible, we can turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 1 Chronicles chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. David built houses for himself in the city of David, and he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent for it. Then David said, No one may carry the ark of God but the Levites, for the Lord has chosen them to carry the ark of God and to minister before him forever. And David gathered all Israel together at Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord to its place, which he had prepared for it. And then David assembled the children of Aaron and the Levites of the sons of Koath, Reel the chief, and 120 of his brethren, of the sons of Merari, Isaiah the chief, and 220 of his brethren, of the sons of Gershom, Joel and the chief, to Joel the chief, and 130 of his brethren, of the sons of Elizaphan, Shemaiah the chief, and 200 of his brethren, of the sons of Hebron, Eliel the chief, and 80 of his brethren, of the sons of Uziel, Aminadab the chief, and 112 of his brethren. And David called for Zadok and Abiathar the priests, and for the Levites, for Uriel, Asiah, Joel, Shemaiah, Eliel, and Aminadab. He said to them, You are the heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, you and your brethren, that you may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel to the place I have prepared for it. For because you did not do it the first time, the Lord our God broke out against us, because we did not consult him about the proper order. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. And the children of the Levites bore the ark of God on their shoulders by its poles, as Moses had commanded according to the word of the Lord. Chapter 15 returns to the narrative concerning the ark of the covenant. Back in chapter 13, if you recall, David attempted to move the ark of the covenant from the house of, Abin uh, of Abinadab in kirjath Jerem, where it had been for almost a century after it was brought back by the Philistines. by the Philistines, David had prepared a tent for the Ark of the Covenant in Jerusalem, a tent that was probably seen by David as a temporary house until David could build God a temple. But regardless, having the Ark in Jerusalem would mean that the symbol of God's presence was there, further uniting the kingdom of Israel together through their common religion. However, instead of carrying it in the way God had instructed all the way back in the book of Numbers, David used a new ox cart instead. We don't know why he did this, but it is the way the Philistines returned it back in 1 Samuel 6, so perhaps that had something to do with it. At the very least, David would admit here in this chapter that they hadn't consulted the Lord as to the proper order, so it could have been that David didn't know how it should be transported and thought that this ox cart was just convenient. Whatever his reasoning was, though, it was flawed, and it cost Uzzah his life. For when the oxen stumbled, Uzzah tried to steady the ark, and God smote him dead for touching the ark, a punishment laid out in Numbers 4, verse 15. Three months have now passed. David's anger had subsided. So too had his fear. What changed? Well, it appears during these three months, David had done some learning. You see, some seem to think that the entirety of the Old Testament was written during the captivity or in the time frame around it, meaning that the people of David's day really didn't possess what we do as far as the first five books of the Old Testament are concerned. And yet, the events spoken of here would claim otherwise. From our past studies, we know that the first five books of the Old Testament were placed in the Ark of the Covenant, but they had also been copied. We have seen events recorded for us from the earlier time periods of the judges being mentioned by the people in connection to other events, showing us that they knew of their past history as recorded in Scripture. And then, of course, we read of the Book of the Law, specifically in the days of Amaziah and Josiah, time periods before the captivity. The fact remains that the Law of Moses existed during the days of David, 
David could consult it either himself or he could consult with it through the priests. And when David did, he realized that God did exactly what God said he would do. David was in the wrong. God was in the right. David, therefore, needed to correct it his ways. And the first thing he needed to do was use the priests and the Levites to move the ark. No mention in chapter 13 is made of the priests and Levites in connection with this, so that it is, it is fairly safe to assume that they weren't involved. For had they been involved, it is likely that someone would have spoken up. So this time, David gathered the families of the priests and the Levites together. He got them to purify themselves for this solemn event, and then he organized them by their different families. The high priests of the time, Zadok and Abiathar, would be at the leading front of this. The, the, Levites, uh, the Levites of the Kohathite family would be used to carry the ark on their shoulders using the staves made for that purpose, just as Moses had commanded in the book of Numbers. But it wasn't just the priests who were involved. The entire family of the Levites would be represented as well, meaning the house of Gershom and the house of Merari. No, they wouldn't be carrying the ark, but they would have other important duties, including ones that we'll read of in the next lesson. Thus, you can see the difference between what David did in chapter 13 and what he does here in chapter 15. In chapter 13, he didn't consult God in his word, and he paid the consequences. In chapter 15, he was going to consult God in his word, and he will reap the benefits. This is a lesson for us today as well. So often people want to do their own thing, thinking that as long as they are sincere, God will be pleased. God is pleased when we in faith obey him. He was pleased when David in faith obeyed him, and he will be pleased with us too. But if we disobey him, rest assured, he is not pleased. He desires us to repent in those situations and turn back to him, for if we don't, we too will suffer the consequences of our actions. We'll continue with this event, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of 1 Chronicles chapter 15, verses 16 to 29, as we continue our walk through the Bible. One verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. God is